one of my great mates. He got to Sydney in 92, I got there in 93. He's ridden 42 Group 1 winners. I've since retired and he is still going. And I'm speaking of Larry Casty. Lackers. Oh, yeah, Glenn. Great to see you, yeah. mate. I know the story from you when you got to Sydney, and most people would, but there's a, there's a big background story before you even got there. So I'd like to know how you started back home in New Zealand. Can you tell everyone about how it all began? Yeah, so obviously, you know, I had Jimmy as a, Jimmy as a um, you know, brother that was riding, and yeah. also Ricky. Obviously, I wanted to follow in their footsteps because mum and dad used to take us to the races, and it's just what I wanted to do. And uh, I sort of got to the age of 12, and thought, well, I couldn't, be, I couldn't be an apprentice jockey in Wellington and decided to leave home and found a stable man by name of Mr. Brent Beattie and his yep. wife, Margaret, and I, I sort of moved in with them and they were like my second mother and father. So I left home at 12 because that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. It, it just couldn't happen these days. Like, no. I, you know, I mean, imagine coming home to your parents saying at a 12-year-old, you know, Bluey, you know, we called him Bluey, yeah. didn't we? You know, and say, oh, I'm, I'm moving out at 12. It's like, you, these days it wouldn't happen. No, but... not at all. And um, I suppose if mum and dad weren't going to let me do it, well, I was just going to go and do it anyway. Correct, yeah. correct. Yeah, was, there was no chance other than to follow what, what Jimmy and that were doing yeah, anyway. So, that's right. So you started in Palmy, which was a melting pot for all the, all the great trainers, isn't that there? Yeah, that was. Obviously, for me, it was hard starting because I, I had a big reputation to live up to. Obviously, Jimmy was yeah. riding successfully uh, in Australia by this time. And, you know, I probably... Yeah, I don't think I really lived up to expectations at the beginning. I then actually did. Is that your opinion or someone else's? Well, you know, it could have been you know mine and, and mine and other people's too. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then shortly after that, I made the move. Moved, made the Sydney move, was calling. Made the move to Sydney uh, in '92, August '92, and uh, yeah, I moved in with Jimmy. You know, yeah. who was a great help to me when coming over and. He was doing a lot of riding for Max Lees and was able to get me aboard uh, Coronation Day in the in the George Main Stakes, you know, and that pretty 49. much kickstart my career in Sydney, winning that. Going back though, was it, is it was it competitive with you and Jimmy? Like, what was it like? In was it you know all the way through? Yeah, it was hard growing up, me and his brother, and trying to be a jockey to try to because people had expectations, obviously. Mm. Um, but getting to Sydney, like, he was just a fantastic help yeah. to me. Although we did have a blue in the jockey's room one yeah, day. Yeah, there was a, few. a Yeah, there was a bit of a. Yeah, there was a few uh, fists thrown around. Well, there was. <laughs> he's he never takes a backward step. I'm no. telling you, he's a man's man. So if he's got something to say or something yeah. to show, he'll do it. You he, know. he was in the wrong this day. He was. Yeah. Well, good. <laughs> good. At least I think he was. I want to talk about one of the greatest horses I ever set eyes on. She beat me in a Doncaster one day. She was a man mountain sunlight. Yeah. Getting on her at a young. Like she, you hadn't been in Sydney that long. No. Weirdly enough, how I got on her was quite funny because I was driving home from Warwick Farm and my phone rings, it was overseas number. I'm like, hello. He goes, hey, Jimmy. I said, oh, it's Larry here. He <laughs> goes, oh, you'll do. Trevor McKee here, I've got a really good horse. He said, I'm bringing it over. I said, wow. yeah, I'll ride it. He goes, you don't even know what race I'm running. I said, I don't care. I said, I'll ride it. He, Is that he said, serious? I didn't yeah. even know that. He, he, he said to me, it's the best horse he's ever had. And I'd known he's had some great yeah. horses. And uh, I just said, I'll ride it. And uh, it was Sunline. Wow. Um, so he had actually, he'd actually rung for Jimmy. Um, but because he rung the wrong number, he that's got me. A, so. That's a great story, <laughs> that is. Jeez, you rode some great horses. Yeah. Um, oh, there, was a, there was a particular filly. I've forgotten uh, her. Unworldly. Oh, Unworldly. Yeah, so she, wow. come, she come along after Sunline. And yeah. uh, I think she won her first three. Yeah. Then I won the flight stakes on her. And just, just in an absolute canter. Yeah. And then I was galloping her um, the Tuesday before the thousand guineas. Yeah. And she broke down. Yeah, that's right. And I remember yeah, that. Yeah, one of the that, hardest. That was ones. one of the biggest, sad, one big sad moment because I remember because she was talked about as like being like a winx. Yeah. Like they were, they, yeah. this is this is a star. Oh, yeah. She was and, the next sunlight. Yeah, yeah. She was going to be the next yeah. one, and then all yeah. of a sudden she went wrong, and it, I, I remember it was like a, it was like a death in the family. Oh, it, it was one of the probably the worst mornings of my life. Just, yeah. um, and I was actually standing beside with my arms around her. Yeah. Um, and she was just a lovely horse. Yeah. And, I mean, know, she black. knew she knew she was gone. Yeah. And she just stood there and accepted it. Yeah. It was really sad. Yeah, it was sad, wasn't it? The biggest move then, uh, obviously. Queensland, and you've been up here for a decade, I suppose. Been up, yeah, it's probably 12 years yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, things sort of got hard in Sydney, and yeah, you know, I was sort of, yeah, you know, I was riding for Gay, and I was riding for Hawks, yeah. and then, um, yeah, you know, I wasn't riding for Hawks, and then Gay, I think um, Blakeson and Nash turned up, and, yeah. and I sort of went from getting 30 rides a week to three. Yeah. And I sort of went on for a while, and I sort of just. You know, tried to work harder and nothing was going anywhere. And I mm. thought, ah, oh, I thought I've had enough of this and decided to make a move to Queensland. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a much more relaxed lifestyle here. I probably got sick of doing all the traveling to uh, the yeah. carnivals. It's very tiring. I've, 
got a bit tired of that too. Um, so, well, look, I'm happy. You've got to go with your gut. Yeah. You know, I wrote a lot of work with you. You know, we wrote stacks yeah. of work with Gay, and you were yes. always known as, as a, like one of the hardest workers and, and one of the better judges that yeah. everyone around. Like, yeah. Gay used to put you on a haul of good horses, didn't you? Yeah. Like, oh, if, yeah. if she had a yeah. good horse, even if you weren't yeah. right yeah. it, she'd yeah. put she'd you on it. She'd want me to gallop it. She'd yeah. want you to gallop yeah. it and get the feedback. I always remember that. I used to sit there sometimes with half this <laughs> because you'd be going around <laughs> on all the Group 1 riders and I'd be riding the midweek, as you yeah. know. Yeah. But there was a reason for it, you know. Yeah. It didn't come without its complications, though, like the injuries, like. Yeah. Well, your knees, like, Jimmy's the same. He's got shocking knees, but yeah. yours were even worse. So I don't think I've ever seen anyone in so much pain when you were going through that with your, your yeah. knees. Yeah, so it, it happened, it actually happened just after I'd ridden Winks. Yeah. And, um, um, yeah, my, my knees were giving me a bit of trouble and then they finally just went and uh, I had torn meniscus, had operation. Yeah. And thought I was going to be riding eight weeks later. Yeah. And just got on a horse and all of a sudden my legs were sore and they did an x-ray and I had stress fractures down my leg. Yeah. Um, and part of the part of the bone in my leg was dying. They they said the only way to fix that is pretty much sit on your backside, feet up, and don't put any pressure on your legs at all. So I sort of did that for about four months. I can't imagine you sitting still for no, even, it was even three minutes. So no, it, was, it was absolutely horrendous. Yeah, yeah, put on a lot of weight. And um, yeah, I probably got a little depressed, you know, because yeah. you, you, you don't feel like your life's going anywhere. Um, then had a go at coming back and it I happened in the other leg. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. yeah. I think it must have been about 18 months, maybe 20 months. Yep. And then I, I had another crack and the doctor said, well, you have to do it this and you have to do that. And I'd listened to everything they'd said and it hadn't worked. Yeah. So I said to Michelle, I said, that's it. No more pills, nothing. I'm just going to grip my teeth, bear the pain. And I said, I'm going for a run. Yeah. And it was only like a 2K run. Yeah. And it hurt like hell. And I got back, she said, you idiot, you're going to break yourself down. I said, yeah, but at least then I can finish and get on with my life. Yeah. Because at the moment, we're in limbo. And, yeah, the next day I did the same. And each day it, it yeah. hurt, but it seemed to get better. Yep. And I don't know, just Mate, my no legs one, hardened up. I don't know. So, like, as you just mentioned her name before, Winx, the great Winx. So that would have been one to stick with, but how did that association, like, they, 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 your ride come up on her? Yeah, actually, it's, it's quite a, it's a bit of a funny story because uh, obviously the Walla crew that does the rides rung the manager and just said, you know, is Larry going to ride in the Sunshine Coast Guineas? Told him what the horse was. He rings me, this is probably two weeks for the race. And he said, um, he said, oh, you got one for Walla in the Sunshine Coast Guineas. I said, oh yeah, what is it? He said, Winx. I said, and I, I was actually on the computer, and I was just punching into riser. Yeah. I'm type W-I-N-K-S. Mm. It didn't come didn't up. Come I said, up. I said, how do you bloody spell that? <laughs> you know, like, and he goes, it's W-I-N-X. I went, never heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> I typed it in, and I looked at the form, and I went, jeez, it's got good form, that's. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and the rest is history. I was sitting in the room watching that win, and I had one of those moments where you have, as a as a jockey, you just go, wow. A normal horse can't accelerate like they have to be exceptional. Not over that distance too. No. Like she was getting faster as like as she got towards like he yeah. was still building up the three. Yeah, and I, I'd pretty it's much just... sat up on a, a hundred out. Yeah, and she just her momentum carried her over the line, getting faster. We were talking before the race, and you just said to me, "This is the best horse I've ever ridden." This Winks, and I went, and you were telling Huey Bowman, yeah. and Huey didn't believe you. I think she's a potential champion. Yeah. And uh, when he won the Cox Plate on her, he sent me a text and said, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but it took him a few wins to work it yeah, out. <laughs> did, didn't it? No. So, Larry, 52 years old, 42 Group 1 winners, chasing down 3,000 winners. I mean, this is a record that you should be so proud of, mate. So what, what keeps you going? Well, look, it, it would be nice to get to the 3,000. I think I'm about 100 and... 70 off it. Yeah. Um, so, look, I've only been averaging 50 odd winners a year. So, yeah. I, I sort of think 55 would pull me up, which mm. is another two and a half years. But, yeah. look, I, I think at the end of the day, it's your body tells you. Yeah. You know, I might wake up next week and go, I'm done. Yeah. Um, and then so be it. Well, Larry, it's been, for me, it's been a thrill to sit down and have a chat with you because we haven't done it for a while. No. And I uh, always loved your company um, because we, you know, we both sort of, we're on both we're career paths. We're both the same, you exactly, know? Yeah. And we both end up achieving what we want to achieve, you know? But, um, mate, thanks very much no, for pleasure, spending Glenn. some time with no, me, Larry. Absolute pleasure. And uh, I wish you all the best Thank in you. whatever endeavour you go. I'm sure, you, mate, whatever you want to do, you'll be successful at, mate. Thank you very much.